This lesson is for section 1.2 on absolute value. Today we've got a lot of different types of problems that we're going to be covering, um, but all of these objectives, these are the types of problems that you're going to be doing, they all relate back to absolute value. So I'll let you go ahead and read those. We're going to move on now to absolute value and its definition. So the absolute value of a real number x is denoted like so, okay, which is something you should be familiar with already, um, and it is the distance from x to the origin. Okay, this is a very important concept. It relies on the fact that it's the distance from x to the origin. Now we're also going to use the algebraic definition for um, absolute value. This is something we'll rely on all year. So the absolute value of x is really what we're going to think of it as a function with two different cases. Okay, If x is greater than or equal to 0, in other words, if x is positive, and it should say or 0 next to this, kind of a typo here, it should say or 0, if x is positive or 0, then we do nothing with it. We leave it alone. However, if x is negative, okay, then we take the opposite of x. All right. So very clearly, I want to state absolute value only changes a value to its opposite if the inside is negative. Okay. In other words, if the quantity inside the absolute value bars is positive or 0, you do nothing. If the quantity inside the absolute value bars is negative, then you have to take the opposite. So this is how we're going to use um, this, this basically function with two different cases now to rewrite expressions to eliminate absolute value bars. All right, so let's start with example number one here. Um, we want to simplify and give an exact answer for this expression. So we're trying to simplify this expression and try to rewrite this without absolute value bars. Now, the first thing we have to consider is whether or not the inside here the inside of this absolute value expression is either positive or negative. Well, just based on your uh, number sense here, you know that 1 minus root 3, root 3 is larger than 1, so we know that the inside of this, this value is negative. Okay, so we're dealing with a negative value. Well, when it's negative on the inside of the bars, remember we have to take the opposite. So what we're going to do is rewrite this as the opposite of 1 minus root 3. This is how we can rewrite this without the bars. At this point, it becomes really easy for us to simplify because we're just going to use the distributive property. We get negative 1 plus root 3 plus 2. And when we simplify here, we end up with root 3 plus 1. This is the final simplified expression that is equivalent to um, this original expression with absolute value. Now, in example two, once again, we're dealing with a quantity here on the inside of those absolute value bars that is negative. So we're going to have to follow the definition of the absolute value, which says that when the quantity is negative, we have to take the opposite. Okay, I'm just going to keep repeating this until it gets hammered into your head. So basically, um, we can drop the absolute value bars if we take the opposite of negative root 2 minus 3. So once we take the opposite and we distribute, we end up with positive root 2 plus 3. So that is what this quantity here is equivalent to. Okay. Now, in example three, um, we're dealing with a variable. Now, don't get too confused on this. Really, what we're trying to get you to do is understand that whatever this quantity is, we don't know what it is, we are going to be raising it to the fourth power. So even if that quantity was negative and we raised it to the fourth power, overall, it's going to be positive, right? But once we have that negative sign out in front here, that quantity remains negative, and we're subtracting six from it. So again, whatever happens here, whatever x happens to be, this inside of the uh, absolute value bars, this quantity is negative. So yet again, because the quantity here is negative, we must take the opposite. So we're going to take the opposite of negative x to the fourth minus 6. We end up with positive x to the fourth plus 6. OK, at this point, I'd like you guys to pause the video and try number 4. Go ahead and check your answer with the key, um, and then you can move on to number 5. All right, so hopefully you got number four correct the first time when you looked at the answer key. If you didn't get it correct, hopefully just by looking at the solution, you do understand it. Um, if you have questions on this stuff, obviously all day tomorrow we can work on this in class um, and you get any you know anything cleared up that you ha may have questions on. All right, so let's go ahead now and take a look at example five. Um, now here it's, it gives us a bit of a constraint because it says find the absolute value of x minus six if x is less than six. So they're giving us this specific condition. Um, so let's think about that. Let's say we plugged in any value that's less than six into this expression. Well, that quantity then on the inside becomes negative, which means we have to take the opposite. So we're going to take the opposite of x minus 6, and we end up with negative x plus 6. We can rewrite this if we want as 6 minus x, but this is what that quantity would be equivalent to as long as x is less than 6. 
Now, on the other hand, if we take a look at example six here, um, it gives us the constraint that x is greater than or equal to three. So let's think about plugging in any value here that's greater than or equal to three. Well, the inside now of your absolute value is positive or zero, right? It would be positive or zero if x was greater than or equal to three, which means we do nothing, okay? Do nothing at all to this expression. So my final answer here is just x minus three. All right, so examples seven and eight now are just a little bit more complex than examples one through six, but they're very similar. Um, our, our goal is still to try to eliminate those absolute value bars and to simplify the expression. This time we just have this written in inter interval notation as well. So we're building off of the skills that you learned in the previous lesson. So what this is asking you is basically the same type of question as numbers five and six here. Um, the condition is just telling you a little bit differently. It's saying on this particular interval, which just means on the open interval from negative one to three, and if you're more comfortable thinking of it in terms of an inequality, that's exactly what that means, okay? So x is between negative one and three. So let's think about what happens to this absolute value expression here if we plugged in any value of x between negative one and three on this open interval. Well, this quantity here, would be positive, which means we're going to do nothing to this quantity. We just take it out of the absolute value bars and it's just x plus 1. Now x minus 3 though, if we're going to plug in anything between negative 1 and 3, this quantity would become negative. Okay, So we have to take the opposite, so we're going to subtract the quantity x minus 3. So we're going to distribute a negative here, so we have x plus 1 minus x plus 3. These x's will cancel and we're left with 4. So if we plug in any value between negative one and three on this interval here, this open interval, that quantity ends up being four. Okay, I would like you guys to try example eight on your own and then check that answer with the key. If you happen to get this incorrect, um, please make sure that you ask in class tomorrow um, if you don't understand what you did wrong when you look at the solution, okay? We'll move on now to the back side of our notes. All right, now for this next section, we're really going to rely on that very um, important concept that absolute value is used in distance calculations, okay? When we want to use, or when we want to say the distance between two numbers, A and B, we'll define it as the absolute value of A minus B or the absolute value of B minus A. So we're going to use this really important concept here in order to rewrite a, a statement that's been written in just plain old English. We're going to convert that into a math equation that has absolute value notation. So our first sentence here says the distance between x and 3 is 6. So we can go ahead and just write the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 6. Just following here this definition. Okay, so the distance between two numbers a and b is defined as the absolute value of a minus b. And we can also rewrite this as the absolute value of three minus x is equal to six, right? Okay, so just following our definition. Now for, for uh, part b here, it says the distance between x and negative four is no more than two. So this is a little bit trickier than just saying is, right? Because is means equals here, we're, we're gonna have to uh, do a little bit of thinking about that. Let's first just set up our absolute value. And we're talking about the distance between x and negative four. We have to take x minus negative four. So that really means x plus 4, okay? So we have the absolute value of x plus 4. Now, if the quantity is supposed to be no more than 2, that really means that it's less than or equal to 2. So you got to do a little bit of thinking there about that. Sometimes that trips up students. So just think about that a little bit before you write down the symbol. Don't just write greater than because you see the word more. So it says no more than 2, which means it's less than or equal to 2. Now. You could have also written this as negative four minus x, right? We can use this definition to switch the order here. We would rewrite that as negative four minus x. That quantity here is less than or equal to two. Now in part C, we're kind of being asked to do the reverse of what we just did in problems A and B. Um, here, we're gonna take a math statement and we're gonna rewrite it in words and it specifically asks us to use the word distance so make sure you're really following directions sometimes we'll have students just gloss that over and not include the word distance so please make sure you do include the word distance here so our math statement here says the absolute value of x plus two so if we want to rewrite this in a sentence and specifically use the word distance we know we can write that as uh, the distance between 
x, and it's actually negative 2 because if we have that plus sign, this had to have been a negative 2 here. So the distance between x and negative 2, and then rather than writing greater than or equal to, let's try to uh, be a little bit more creative with this. We can actually shorten this up a little bit by writing at least, right? If something is greater than or equal to a value, then it's at least that value. So we can write the distance between x and negative 2, um, oops, is at least 1, okay? Okay, now for problems 9 through 11, we could actually solve these absolute value inequalities here using algebra. This is something that you guys would have done last year in 9091. Instead, though, we're going to actually think about this geometrically. The directions here say the set of real numbers that satisfy this inequality. So in other words, in order to solve this inequality, you'd have one or more intervals on a number line. We're going to show the intervals on a number line. So we're going to think of this geometrically as opposed to solving it algebraically. Now I also added uh, directions here. We're just going to write quickly the intervals just to practice writing interval notation. Now for number 9 it says the absolute value of x is less than 3. So think about our original definition that we gave about uh, absolute value. Remember it's the distance between x and the origin. And you can think of it too as x minus 0, the absolute value of that is less than 3. So again, x and the origin, right? So if the distance between x and the origin is less than 3, that means that x must fall between negative 3 and 3. So if we wanted to write that or draw it out on um, a number line here, this is the the uh, open interval. Okay, It's an open interval because it's less than 3, strictly less than 3. Now if we were going to write this as an interval, we would write this as the open interval from negative 3 to 3. Okay, for example 10, we have the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than 1. What we're going to do first is try to interpret this just using the word distance, and then we're going to draw a number line. So um, if we were going to just think of this in terms of, you know, just a normal sentence, this is the distance between x and negative 2 is more than 1. So the distance between x and negative 2 is more than 1. So I'm going to draw a negative 2 here, and I know that the distance between any number x is supposed to be more than one unit away from negative 2. So I'm going to go one unit away from negative 2, and I know it's more than that away, so this is going to be an open parenthesis, right? It can't be a, a closed bracket there, because it does not include the number negative 3, because then it would be exactly one unit away, and it has to be more than one unit away. And we'll do the same thing over here. So that's our geometric interpretation as a diagram. Now, if we want to write this in interval notation, we have the unbounded interval here from negative infinity to negative 3, joined with the another unbounded interval from negative 1 to positive infinity. All right, now for example 11, if you would like to um, try this one on your own, you're more than welcome to. I don't know how comfortable you feel so far doing these. Um, I'm actually going to go through the entire example, so you can pause the video, try it on your own. If you get it incorrect, then obviously go back and listen to the solution, okay? All right, so here we have the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to 1. Again, in terms of distance here, this is the distance between x and negative 2. And now this is less than or equal to 1. So that means it's uh, no more than one unit away. Okay, So we are going to draw negative 2 one more time here. And we're going to go one unit away in both directions. And this time, if you're no more than one unit away, that actually means okay, we're looking at a closed interval from negative 3 to negative 1. So to rewrite this in interval notation is pretty easy, um, but that's basically um, all the values, all the all real numbers between negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 3 and negative 1. All right, guys, uh, finally, I would like you to make sure that you familiarize yourself with these properties that are listed here at the bottom of your notes. Um, it's really just here for your reference. Many of these properties are very intuitive. So just take a moment and kind of look these over, and then now you have them as a reference as well. Um, the only property I want to highlight is this triangle inequality here, um, and that's because in the very last problem of your homework, you're going to be asked to prove something using the triangle inequality. So here it is for your reference, um, and I'll help you out with that proof if you get stuck. Okay, Great job. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.